Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Arvid and in today's video I want to talk about car paint shaders. One of my viewers asked me if I could do a tutorial on that and this is exactly what we're going to do today. I will be using AL shaders for the car paint. If you don't know what AL shaders are, refer to my other tutorial M2A102 or on my website under the tutorial section. I've got a dedicated page to all the M2A tutorials. AL Shader with Maya 2017. That's the one you should be looking at, how to install AL shaders. So let's jump back into Maya. I have a simple scene prepared. It is an outdoor scene. We've got one light source from the left and we got a car and I will just be focusing on the car paint. Um, I will have three spheres which re represent three different shaders. One is a basic car paint shader then we've got a metallic car paint shader and we've got a pearlescent car paint shader. I also have references for this, just found them on the net. So this would be the basic shader we will be creating. Um, this will be the metallic one with nice flakes and a nice fall off. And then somewhere there is the pearlescent one, which is this one. So you can see on the facing angle, you get a different color on, as on the sides of the cop. So this is what we will be recreating. So, but first we will do a simple red car paint and let's jump right into it. So I am starting the renderer, enabling progressive, and we will just for, for now be focusing on the sphere. Let's just increase the resolution for this. Press O to um, original size and let's open the node editor, AKA Hypershade. I just have a stripped down version of this. So the basic car paint shader, it's currently uh, assigned to the object and to the car, um, but it is the default shader. So I loaded the preset default, and this is exactly what we're getting. So the, a, a basic car paint is actually just one base layer of a color, and then there's a clear coat on top of that. It's nothing fancy, and we, we will be recreating this. So first, I will pick the color with the color picker, So now we have more or less the color, in most cases, the color, like the base diffuse color, is more desaturated and darker than, you, than it actually is. So let's desaturate it a bit and darken it down. And let's change the shift hue, shift a bit. And for now, let's remove all the specularity. I know, I am also just eyeballing the, the base color so we don't have something exact. There are libraries where you can get the exact color of a car paint um, but this is just for the tutorial and I want to show you the procedure how to create a shader and not to be physically accurate. So let's introduce specularity. It is a clear code and specular 1 is in most cases the, the coding layer, the top layer. Specular 2 would be the base layer which we won't use for this shader. Uh, so let's introduce some specularity and reduce the roughness. And for now, change the mode from uh, the distribution mode from Backman to GGX, which gives you a nicer tail fall off. Also, let's change the mode to di from dielectric to metallic, which might confuse you, but it's I like the workflow better. If you put this reflectivity to black, uh, which is almost the same IUR as 1.4, you can see that there's, with 1.4 there's a bit more front-facing reflection. So what you need to do for the metallic one is just introduce a bit more value uh, for the front-facing and you get exactly the same effect. So it's still a bit strong, so let's just add a bit more so that, now this is more or less the same. And you can see also in the car reference that you actually have reflections directly on the, on the camera, on the front facing camera, S uh, subtly, but they are reflections. Um, but the reflections I'm, I'm, I'm having are currently way too rough, so let's uh, make them more shinier. 
something like this. And I think the car paint I'm having, the, and this car paint is a bit too uh, bright still. So let's reduce the color gain. And maybe bring back some saturation. So it's now fully saturated red. I'm almost happy with the result, only that um, it's too perfect. And in a real car paint, you, you see that you never have perfect edges. There's always a dent or sometimes the coating is thicker. So there's um, always a variation. You can see that this line is not straight, but here it's perfectly straight, for instance, or here. So what I always like to do is I like to add a bump map on top of everything. So let's do that. Let's just create an AI noise and connect this uh, create a 2D bump node. 2D bump. Can't I spell what is happening? 2D bump 2D node. Well, the out value of the noise goes to the bump value and the out normal connects to the normal camera, which is essentially the bump map. Immediately, you can see something is happening. Um, way too strong, but you can see the effect. So first, let's choose isolate selected and select noise. This is now my current noise pattern. Let's put it to two octaves and maybe introduce a bit more repetition. So let's try two and let's head over to shading mode. And this is now what we're getting, way too strong. In the noise, you've got amplitude, so reduce that to something really, really subtle. So you can see that this line now is not straight anymore. And we are some getting something like this, like soft bends and not too perfect lines on the car. Um, let's see now how this looks on the car. Uh, let's change it to 100%. Still need to assign the shader. Assign existing basic paint. Currently, the UVs are different from the sphere and for the car. So if I would now go to isolate selected again, you would see that the noise is really, really tiny, which is not what we want. We want a really broad noise. So I tested around some values. So I think these values should work quite good. Let's paste them in the other slots. And this is now the noise. Let's see how it looks rendered. Yeah, let's just enable this and disable this and you see if we can get a difference. Bring this back. Well, it's a really subtle difference. Maybe we should introduce a bit more of the amplitude until we see something changing on the surface. Okay, this is too strong, but let's try 0 0.05. So let's zoom out full screen. So if you think the car is too shiny, you just adjust the IOR and that's more or less you got to do for a basic car paint. Um, let's just reduce the value a bit more and maybe overall uh, the specularity just a tiny bit. I know something like this maybe and this would be a basic car paint shader. Let's head over to perspective, enable 3D mode and see different angles, different reflections. The the steeper the angle, the more the the object's object reflects. So you can see it actually also in the reference when I find it here. Let's just full screen this. Uh, can I zoom on? Uh, so yeah, you can see actually that on the top edges of the car, you can see a, a stronger reflection than on the front facing angles. So and this is what we're trying to mimic in the shader. Um, so this is mostly trial and error. It is also dependent on um, the HDR you're using. But in most cases, this should be enough. So now let's head over to the next shader, which is a metallic car paint shader. I will assign this to the car, uh, the car body. Assign. So we got uh, the basic here. And now we're working on the middle one, which is a basic uh, or which is a metallic car paint. So changing camera again and pressing O for original size. And if you shift uh, and drag, you can create a region. So a metallic car paint, let's check the reference. 
uh, minimize. Is this on the top still? Yes. So this would be what we're trying to create. So first, let's uh, work with the base ref uh, reflections. So we will have a base metallic reflection. And you do that by, let's first uh, disable diffuse. So no diffuse contribution. And we disable specular one for now as well. And we will be just working in the specular two slot. Uh, okay, so enabling this and changing the mode to metallic and changing the color of the color picker to something, something like, I don't know, this. So we already get the nice fall off. Let's change the mode first to GGX this is nicer and the first thing I want to do is adjust the roughness so we get a similar fall off like like on here so you can see this is the Sun in this area and you get a tail this wide so it's actually quite close already um, something like this adjusting the color a bit more uh, let's try something darker Yeah, I think this is quite close already. So all we got to do now is add those nice shiny flakes. And to do that, you will use the AL flake. It is also a shader from AL shaders. Quite powerful to create um, effects like this. And the out value would connect into the, you would think in the bump map, but no, it does not go there. It goes into the advanced tab of specular two. And in here, you'll have a, normal slot. Um, I think if you connect it directly, if you drag this into the slot, let's see what it connects to. Oh, it actually gives you a dialog, so this is good. So AR flake out value connects to specular to normal, specular to normal, close. So this is the connection you have to set up in order for the flakes to appear. And be aware, it changes from the space, the um, tangent, sp um, the object space to world. And let's update the scene. And now you get flakes. So let's talk about the, the values you have here. The amount is how many flakes are they spread on over the surface? So if this the smaller the value, you get like spread out flakes at some areas. So the smaller the value, the less obviously flakes. The higher you get flakes everywhere, which we want. We want flakes everywhere, but we want to change the other values. The size is the flake of a singular flake. So the higher this value, the bigger the flakes. Divergence is how how much it bends or is how much the flake is being bent on the surface. So a value of zero would actually disable the flakes. Um, so let's see what we got to do um, to properly set up the values. So let's first add some divergence and change the size to something small. It's still too big a bit. I think it's still a bit too big, but we'll try to match this exactly or as closely as we can. So adjusting the divergence, if you control click and drag into the um, attribute editor, you can actually slide the values inside of here. So check. I'm checking now this area here, the fall off. It is quite close. We can um, bring uh, reduce the roughness a bit more so we get more shinier pings. Oops, that's too much. Well, we need a bit more, um, a bit more tail. So I think the value was all right. Something at 0.3 for the roughness on GGX model. And let's see, what can we do? If you, let's see if we reduce the flex a bit. So we get some more spread out ones and increasing the divergence. Yeah, I think uh, this works quite good. I think the flakes are still a bit too big, so let's half them, half the size again. Yeah, I think we're getting there, definitely. Let's try a bit smaller still. Yeah, I think this is quite good. So um, 
Now let's introduce the uh, specular one again. You can see it's a really shiny specular one, one uh, lobe. So bringing the spec in should give us a nice look. Closing specular two tab, opening spec one, changing, changing the mode to metallic and both values to black with a little bit of reflectivity just in the previous shader and bringing in the spec one pass. Roughness, it's definitely still too rough. Change the mode to GGX for spec one as well. Lowering the roughness. Yeah, and I think we are quite good already. I will as well add the bump map to this to give, give the surface a bit more uh, realism. Some, yeah, just some variation, which is always good. Maybe the spec overall is a bit strong. Let's just reduce this to 0.8 or something. And um, let's see what the shader looks on the car. Possibly the UVs are also wrong and we need to adjust them. Let's close up on here, render this and see how big the flakes are. Well, it's actually all right, I think. I think it's because it's on world scale, um, the size, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think we should reduce the size some more. Uh, let's try 0 0.25. I don't This is now an aesthetic thing, so you would adjust it to your needs, whatever you want, want the shader to look like. We currently just have one strong sunlight and a different angle than in the reference, so it does not really compare as good as this guy because this is a round surface like this, so we get a closer match on, this, on the um, re reference sphere. Um, yeah, but this is kind of the basic setup for a car paint. So if you if you don't if you're not happy with the color, um, you can easily make this a bit brighter to make it more reflective. So the brighter the reflectivity, the brighter oh the 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 stronger actually the reflection. So I think this actually helped quite a bit to to get the nice metallic effect. All right, and this is now the final result for the metallic car paint. You can see the flex behave really nicely on this on the sphere, and also on the front where the sun hits the surface quite nicely. So now um, let's uh, create the other car paint, which is a pearlescent car shader, um, which will look kind of like um, like this. So we have a blue front, and then it fades into purple. Let's try just this color shift. So um opening or first assigning the shader to the car car body again um person shader changing this guy to progressive and focusing on the sphere um saving and opening the node editor again so it will also be a metallic car paint but a, a pearlescent metallic car paint. So first, what I like to do is disable all the other, all the other lobes I don't need. So disabling diffuse completely, spec one completely, and for now, just working in specular two. I will also be working. Again, I will be using a metallic car paint, but the reflectivity this time. Um, will be a, uh, but this time the reflectivity will be driven by a node rather than just one color. So you might have seen this before using an AL, AL uh, no, not AL, an sampler info node, but this time we will be using a AL shader, shader node again called AL uh, input scalar, which on default uses the facing ratio. If you don't, Want to do this this way, you can also use the sampler info, which, result, uh, which gives you the same result. So you would use the facing ratio to drive the next node, which is a ramp shader. Standard Maya ramp texture, deleting the 2D node, and connecting the input 
scalar output value inside the V coordinate or the facing ratio from the sampler info node to the V coordinate, which is the same thing. The out color connects to the specular to reflectivity. Specular to. Don't I have it in here? Don't think so. Uh, so let's middle mouse drag this over to reflectivity slot. So there we go. The default is a gray ramp, but we want for now a rainbow. So this is now what the what it looks like. The edge color and the center color. Let's delete the middle one so we just get this. Also we want to connect the same node to the edge tint which essentially is just the color on the 90 degree angle which we want the same thing to be the same thing. So we already on default have kind of the effect we are getting for uh, oops not this side for this, but we let's adjust the colors a bit more. Okay, so this is a blue, not a perfect blue, so let's adjust this a bit, a bit more cyan. Yeah, I think we can live with this. And the red should be more purpley. Not pink, a little bit of pink, something like this. And with with these points, you can actually define how strong the blending happens. So the closer this gets to the blue, the stronger the facing ratio controls the map. So now only a small part is blue, and then directly we get the shift to the purple color, which is too pink, definitely. Let's change the interpolation to smooth. and work more on the color so make them more purple more purple yeah i think this should be just fine and let's change this a bit smaller clamp those values more together let's try a different value here yeah this is good exponential up is quite good in this scenario Still a bit too, too pink, let's just dial it down a bit more to purple. Yeah, okay. Let's have a quick peek on how it looks on the car. If we are getting the desired result, um, which we kind of do very strong here on the on these sides, but a nice fall off on the top part. Yeah, it's maybe a bit strong, the clamping. So let's introduce a bit more of the blue and shifting this a bit back. Let's see how the sphere looks like, this one. Yeah, still working. Okay, so this is like a basic purpose and you, you definitely for your cars or whatever you want to do, you would need to adjust those those RAMs way more to get, a, to get your desired result. Um, so we're happy with this. And let's do the same thing with the flakes. So AL flake, if you remember, it goes to the specular 2 normal slot. So middle mouse drag into the spec 2 normals and the out value connects spec 2 normals. Wow, let's adjust the uh, tangent space to world and let's see how this for now looks like on default values I think these are kind of real scale values let's have a sneak peek what we had here for values so we had um, 0.3 and a very small value so let's just copy those values over so divergence is on 0.3 size is on I don't know I think I had 2.5 uh, 0 Five. Let's try this. And also, I think I forgot to add the bump map, didn't I? Yeah, I forgot the bump map on the metallic paint. But um, you can actually, if you want to do, you can just copy this guy, 
or reuse it if you um, select this and then you click plus in the other network you should get the bump map which is here and let's connect this guy to the bump slot middle mouse drag and bump slot connected so we have now the same bump values which we have on the basic car paint just to give a little bit more randomization so we got the metallic flakes we got some nice effect happening here let's see how this feel now looks like and we're still missing the specular one which is the clear code let's introduce this now so specular one roughness is quite low changing the mode to ggx changing okay for this let's leave it on dielectric and introducing specular one so getting a nice shiny pearlescent car shader also you can see the bump effect happening and let's see how the car looks like with the spec two uh, spec one coding I think it looks quite cool. This is what the final render looks like. And to be honest, I think the flags are still a bit too big. Um, you wouldn't see them as big as in the real world. Um, but you get the idea. And I think now you're able to easily set up your own car paint shaders and using the nice AL flake. I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. And if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe even share this video on your page or on your Twitter or whatever. Check out the other tutorials on my page as well. They are in, on a playlist called 3D Tutorials. Thank you guys for watching and if you have any other requests for tutorials, please let me know and I will try to produce something for you. Thank you guys.